A big Nintendo Switch exclusive gets some new details that should please fans of this game. I finished the Monster Hunter Rise story campaign and wanted to share a few more thoughts on the single player stuff with no spoilers. And finally, the Nintendo 3DS just celebrated its 10th year. And although Nintendo tried to kill it, it's not dead yet, boys. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video, but without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So one of the big Nintendo Switch exclusive games that a lot of people have circled on their calendar, but not for this year, actually for 2022, is Project Triangle, which is the latest RPG from the team at Square who brought us games like Octopath Traveler. Now obviously Octopath Traveler was a huge success on the Nintendo Switch, sold over 2 million copies. It's now available on Xbox Game Pass if you haven't checked out the game, but it was really a throwback to a more classic RPG system, whereas Project Triangle is a throwback to a another classic RPG, but the strategy RPG stuff. There is a demo available on the Nintendo Switch eShop if you want to check out this game. I actually haven't checked out the demo yet just because, I don't know, it's kind of weird to play a demo for a game that doesn't come out until 2022, but many people who played this demo said that there's a lot of promise. Obviously, the visual style looks a lot like Octopath Traveler, and it looks really good, I feel. Well, there was a recent interview done with Tomoyo Asano, who is the producer of the game, that was translated by Nintendo Everything. I'll have a link to the full uh, interview in the description box down below should you want to read it, but there were a few highlights and things that I found to be very interesting. So much like an Octopath Traveler, the game will feature multiple endings sort of based on your decisions within the game. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of characters within this game, and there's sort of a lot of customization as well. One of the things that they sort of highlighted when they were showcasing this game when it was initially unveiled during the last Nintendo Direct was the fact that there was going to be branching paths for your characters and branching paths for your story based on decisions that you make within the game. They're also targeting about 50 hours of gameplay for the story, which, I mean, let's be real, you could sit there and target 50 hours, but I feel like there's going to be a lot more in this game as far as the story is concerned. Now, as far as the storyline is concerned, it seems like the game is going to be more geared towards adults and they wanted to do a strategy RPG in order to convey this message. So very interesting stuff coming out here. Now, I'm not the biggest strategy RPG fan in the world. I've played games like Final Fantasy Tactics. I would say probably my favorite strategy RPG of all time would be Shining Force 3 on the Sega Saturn. That was kind of the game that introduced me to the genre and made me realize, hey, I actually like these games. But I think that Project Triangle is going to be once again a big hit on the Nintendo Switch. Like I said, this is going to be an exclusive for the system. Strategy RPGs and RPGs in general are selling very well on the Nintendo Switch, especially with Sony kind of becoming more Western focused and not really focusing on more Eastern RPGs and things like that. So I think this is going to be a big hit. I do hope they change the name and not like Triangle Traveler or something like that. Like, I don't understand why they didn't make it a Final Fantasy Tactics game. Like it would have just made sense to me to sort of put it in there to put that Final Fantasy name on it to sort of bring in people but i guess they want to do it as a brand new ip but like i said i have the full interview in the description box down below on nintendo everything so make sure you guys check that out but let me know what you think about this game have you played this demo is this a demo that i should pick up and check out let me know in the comments down below Next up, yesterday on the channel, I did a Monster Hunter Rise video in which myself, Hey J, Nate the Hate, and Spawn Wave played some online multiplayer missions in the game. Make sure you guys go check out that video. I sing genuine and Peter Cottontail songs. It's a it's a bizarre video, but it is very funny and it really sort of encapsulates what Monster Hunter Rise is when it comes to the multiplayer section of the game. Just how fun and how fluid everything is, and just fighting these huge monsters within the world and trying to kill them and stuff a lot of good times in that video make sure you guys check it out Another one. <laughs> Jump on it. but in that video i didn't really talk about the single player aspect of the game i've actually finished the story of the single player as far as the mainline story is concerned there's a ton of stuff after the game so don't think that you're just going to play the story and then be done with it there's of course more equipment more monsters to hunt new monsters to hunt as well after the story is completed it took me probably around 12 hours or so i put about 20 hours into the game thus far but i just wanted to highlight a few more things that maybe i didn't really focus on in that video and one of the things i have to highlight 
highlight is just how gorgeous this game looks. This is the best looking Nintendo Switch third party game by far. I honestly think you could put it right up there with games like Luigi's Mansion 3 because they're stylistically different. You know, I think this looks as good as first party Nintendo games, even better than a lot of first party Nintendo games. This is like something I would expect to look and play on a Nintendo Switch revision when you're playing it and there's so much chaos happening on the screen. The frame rate is just like, oh, you know, no big deal. And the monsters themselves are just so awesome. They have all of their own abilities. They have all of their own sort of tendencies, how they interact with other monsters within the universe that allow you to do turf wars. And they just sort of like battle each other out like a Godzilla versus Kong thing. There's so much stuff to do in the traversal system because of the wire bug is just so much better than in previous Monster Hunter games because it almost makes the maps feel a little bit smaller on the surface because you could get from point A to point B with the wire bugs or riding on your dog. But these maps are very layered. I'm still finding new areas in higher up areas and lower areas in these maps that I haven't discovered before. Like it's absolutely crazy how much hidden stuff there is within these levels. If you've never played a Monster Hunter game before, I think it's very accessible. It's probably not as accessible as Monster Hunter World, but I still think it's accessible enough to where you could jump into the game and you could sort of understand it. You know, find your weapon that you want to use, find your weapon that you want to utilize within the game and just sort of stick with that until you get really comfortable. I actually used a sword and shield for all of the single player campaign. Now I'm experimenting with other weapons because I'm trying to upgrade my gear and stuff. There's just so much stuff to do and it's, I, I just absolutely love this game. When it comes time to talk about game of the year, Monster Hunter Rise needs to be in this conversation because of just how high quality is in terms of graphics, in terms of control, in terms of frame rate, in terms of performance, in terms of visual style, and just in terms of how much gameplay you get within this game. I actually got the game from Capcom as I did a sponsored video, but I got the collector's edition of the game too. And like, I'm leaving this sealed with the Magnum Allo in here. Like, I just, I just love this. I love this game. I can't say enough positive things about this game. If you're on the fence about Monster Hunter Rise, check Check out my video that has all the homies in it where we're having some fun playing the online multiplayer because it's an awesome game and definitely a game of the year contender for me. We don't know about the second half of the year, but there's not going to be many quality games that will be above what Monster Hunter Rise brings to the table, I feel. And finally, the Nintendo 3DS, it, it kind of had a dramatic death. Like once the Nintendo Switch came out, there was like a couple games that came out for it. You got like Samus Returns and stuff like that. And th those games didn't sell well because the Nintendo Switch was what everyone was focused on. But the Nintendo 3DS turned 10 yesterday in the United States being on this past Saturday. And I have so many fond memories of the system. It's time for an RGT story time. I remember when the 3DS was first coming out, me and my buddy wanted to go to a Walmart to pick it up at midnight because we thought it was going to be a very hot seller like the Nintendo DS was. He had had too many drinks and he was like, hey, why don't you take my car? And he had just gotten 20s on his Cadillac CTS and I'd never driven his car before. It's pouring down rain. His headlights sucked and you could see like two feet in front of you. So I'm like as grandma, just like driving on a steering wheel, trying to avoid like wrecking his car. But we ended up going to a Walmart. We were the only two people there that were at this midnight launch and like we tried to get him to sell it to us at like 11 30 they're like no we have to wait till midnight and it was just literally me and him but it was a fun time i ended up picking up ridge racer and street fighter 4 for the 3ds when it first came out and just a great system great library of games but you know what kids 3DS ain't dead yet. No sirree, because a brand new game was just announced that's actually getting a physical release on the Nintendo 3DS. The game is called Andro Dunos 2, which I'm probably not saying right, but this was basically a sequel to a Neo Geo game that I've never played before. It's coming to the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, the Nintendo Switch, the Dreamcast, and the Nintendo 3DS. So no matter what platform you have, you'll be able to play this game. Now, it's a side-scrolling shoot-em-up. It kind of gives me some Thunder Force or Darius vibes to the gameplay, you know? It's a pixel style graphics. The music is being done by Alistair Brimmel, who did Alien Breed back on the Amiga and the DOS in the early 90s. And I just think it looks like a solid game. You know, shoot 'em up games are very fun. I'm usually more of a vertical shoot 'em up fan, more so than a horizontal shoot 'em up fan, but I do enjoy these styles of games. And the fact that this game is getting a physical release on the Nintendo 3DS and the Nintendo Switch as well. But the 3DS version, like, that's the version I want. I love to see new games come out on old systems, especially with a physical release. It's being rated by the Peggy rating board and the ESRB. So like this is an official 
official thing. This is a legitimate thing. Now it's going to be a limited style of thing. You have to go to a website in order to purchase the physical version of this game, but the 3DS ain't dead yet, baby. And I love stuff like this. You know, I hope limited run games ends up doing some 3DS and even some DS stuff. Like there's so many games that have just been forgotten about on these systems, games that weren't localized, games that were available on things like the DSiWare that we just don't get to play anymore. So yes, the Nintendo 3DS is getting a new game in 2021, an officially licensed and released game. And I just absolutely love stuff like this. I think the trailer looks really cool and I'm going to pick up this game just because I want to own it. So Astro Dunos 2, just kind of a weird name, but yeah, you can get it on the Switch and get it on the 3DS and I'll probably mess around and buy both of them. All right, folks, that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. How about those New York Knicks? Fifth place in the East. My Hornets are fourth place in the East. We're looking good. You know, it sucks that Mitch went down last night. Uh, not my old plant, but Mitchell Robinson, who is the center for the New York Knicks. I hope he gets a speedy recovery. You got to start looking at that free agent market. You know, I think DeMarcus Cousins is still available. Like, he's not a very defensive player, but, you know, if you have two defensive base centers, you could put him out there for for offensive purposes. I think that's something I need to explore. I'm going to shut up rambling about the NBA now. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. Check out that Monster Hunter video. It's hilarious. Trust me, you will laugh at least once. And as always, guys, I'll catch you guys on the next vid. Later.